Greetings and welcome back. I'm Flop, and this is my Legacy of the Void. I am going to make this clear. The Templar are not a weapon you can wield as Our you Dennis wish. Is we are not here to slay your enemies under false pretenses. Deceive me again, and this alliance of ours comes to an end. Slaying Malash's guardians fulfilled more than one purpose. Once the High Lord lies dead at my feet, None will challenge my rule. After all these years, my victory is nearly at hand. I feel his concern on Tannis. He knows that I'm coming for him. Malash? No. Amon. Through the breath of creation, I peer beyond the veil. Who is this dude? <sighs> Yes, I feel his rage washing over me. He knows I no longer fear him. He knows that the Taldarim have no color for him to control. I will turn the Chosen against him. Do not assume you are already victorious, Alarak. Do not let the Terrazine cloud your judgment. You have a battle to win first. The battle is already won. In my mind's eye, I have delivered the killing blow in a thousand ways. From my experience, overconfidence is your opponent's greatest ally. Do not let yours aid Malash. Spoken as one who welcomes defeat. Oh, man. This dude is the, the best thing to happen to this campaign. Finished replicating a new combat unit. You can assign it to a faction now if you wish. I totally do. All right. <sighs> Malash has proven himself to be a dangerous leader. Indeed. That's why my victory shall be the sweetest of ecstasy. Has he defeated many in this rite? Countless. He ascended the chain with brutal wrath, plowing through all who opposed him. It's as if he were blessed by the Dark God. They called him the Blade of Amon. And still he was challenged? It is our way. He defeated each with lingering cruelty. Malash <laughs> revels in bringing his challengers to the edge of death and tormenting them for a time after. That this does is gonna not be an awesome comfort me, Alarak. Please let it be cutscene. Comfort is a myth given to younglings until they are ready for the trials and pain that is true existence. Believe me, it is time to make preparation. Like, dude, you're on our bridge. Seriously, it's not our job to leave. Okay, let's take a look at the mission so we know what we're up against. The darkness within calls for the blood of Malash. Now is the hour of my ascendance. Let Rakshir commence! Yeah, he's really into this. Okay, 15 Solarite, and the bonuses is another 15. That's probably three little things. Support Alarak with 25 units or more at the same time. Destroy three Taldarim Nexi in the Rockshear mission. All right, so we have to go. Oh, obviously, this is not. Uh, this looks like a kind of power struggle mission. Death Fleet is active. That's no good. Taldarim High Lord sighted. Uh, so we probably have to support our guy and defend attacks. And these bonus missions <clears throat> want us to do a little more than that. Go on the offensive some. Uh, I think the Shadow Hunter. Dark Templar would be perfect for that. Although I could go Avenger, really. Uh, the Shadow Hunters are nice because of, the Avengers are nice because if they die, get detected, they'll just come back. Um, the Shadow Hunters are nice because they can eliminate detectors. All right, let's talk. Talk it out. This chain of ascension is a despicable practice. It is how the Kalai once thought of the Nerezim's shadow walk. There is no comparison. Our society was not founded upon... Their culture is one unyielding hierarchy. Servant to master. A constant reinforcement of their bondage to Amon. But they have been lied to, Matriarch. And how could this change if it is all they have ever known? Our people once only knew hatred of one another. Suspicion. Yes. We viewed your practices as barbaric, and you viewed ours as cruel. 
It is the same with the Taldarim. With I'll try not to mumble this episode. I know last episode I got pretty his quiet. Betrayal. I expect their entire society to seek out who they truly are and what they wish to be. Just thought I'd mention that while they were talking about important stuff. Okay, let's look at what we got here. Are now ready for your inspection. Looks like we got a new energizer type. Constructed based on Alarak specifications. Let us hope his instructions were thorough. And here we have the Havoc Combat Amplifier. What? Increases damage dealt to target enemy unit by 30%. Effect lasts as long as the Havoc remains locked on. Increases attack range while nearby friendly units by 2. What? And force field. Okay, this may be the one to have. Uh, obviously, the speed boost is nice. Attack and movement of 50% is great. <clears throat> this. This is something else. Damage and attack range? That is insane. You can siege with units that aren't even siege units. It doesn't even make sense. Oh, wow. Okay. And we have assault ships. We have the Void Ray. Uh, deals increasing damage as long as it maintains its attack. So its range actually increases as its damage increases. A brutal combo with the Havoc uh, support unit. Destruction is at hand. And then this thing. Let's have some other chain fire. The destroyer's attack being splits and deals damage to additional nearby targets as the destroyer continues to attack up a maximum of three additional targets. Oh, MG. Uh, mixed with the range from the Havoc, uh, we can have the best of both worlds, I think, here with this chain laser. The Tall Uh The Dark Archon. I feel like that was a good choice. Oh, that was confusion. Oh, and they have attacks? Yeah, we're totally going with Dark Archons. We don't have to sacrifice Dark Templar to get them. They're much faster. We can warp them straight in. These guys. Um, disruption with... The skies await. It is a good day to die. Graviton beam, it's better against enemy immortals. Blood hunters can take care of the things we can't lift. We can mind control the rest. Uh, the missile bombardment. Uh, missile bombardment would be better if we weren't using phoenixes that lift enemies up where they can't be targeted like that. Uh, combo much better with Corsair. For now, Let's actually go with the Immortal, because it's just really tough and has great passives. Stalker. The Dragoons mixed with the Havoc's extended range. The Dragoons already have extended range. I imagine that would be quite potent. I'm interested to see it. And then again, the Sentinel's ability to get back up saves us a lot of cash in the long run and uh, momentum as well. Uh, all right, so this looks perfect for me. We're gonna go pretty destroyer heavy if I have my way. Ah, Hierarch, welcome to the solar core. Yes, Carax, it's like I've never the been keystone. here. It's reacting to void energies upon the planet's surface, most likely. I've seen this before on Ulnar. This Terrazine must be directly linked to the void. The Taldarim call it the Breath of Creation. They believe imbibing it allows them to speak directly to Amon. A far-fetched claim, <laughs> yet I cannot deny its plausibility. The substance's properties appear to be foreign to our universe. Perhaps this is why it is so holy to them. They seek out planets rich in Terrazine and turn them into temples to their god. Okay. Our coming nice. here may Way to be throw a blessing it back to us. The if the keystone reacts to Terrazine like it does with void energy, I may be able to use it to stress the artifact, determine its limits. 
Perhaps fate has not abandoned us completely. We must have faith. I prefer results, Hierarch. Amon is powerful in measures that eclipse even the Queen of Blades. There is no room for uncertainty. Nice. Good smackdown talk there. All right, we are rich in solarite. Let's look at what we want. I want orbital simulator so good. Warp harmonizer, harmonization also so good. Simulators. The harmonizations are nice, uh, but we didn't really need the extra speed, and getting them into the fight wasn't as important. Also, I feel like we're not going to need to teleport in as much as we're going to need to strike surgically. Solar Lance and Phoenix, I believe, are going to be how we're, we're going to tear down these Taldarine bases that we're supposed to. And. Um, This is going to be a sustained mission. Let's go with starting supply to get a jump on the early game. So what we're going to try and do is jump in to enemy bases. <clears throat> we're going to bring some Dark Templar in. And this is how we're going to wipe out their, uh, their bases is with Silver Lances and deploying Phoenix on top of them. Uh, and some Dark Templar support should be enough. The orbital assimilators will save us in probes, and the warp harmonization will mostly use our ships to uh, defend and carve territory, uh, not for the surgical strikes against Nexi of our enemies. All right, so that all prepared. Let's go. I know, I know. It doesn't want me to keep doing the big unit blob. We got this. The rite of Rakshir has begun. From this moment, only Alarak and Malash are allowed to engage each other in combat directly. All right. One must overpower the other and reach the pit of sacrifice. There, the victor will stand as the new leader of the Talgarine. Loser's life will be forfeit. They appear quite evenly matched. This is true. However, from what I have learned, Rakshir allows the champion's supplicants to support them psionically. Our warriors will be able to aid Alar. But likewise, the oh, I see it's kind of a king of the hill. I will ready our forces. Malash will fight ruthlessly to hold on to his power. We must be prepared to do the same. Alright, perhaps teleporting in was a good idea. The Taldarim will send warriors to aid Malaz shortly. We should ensure Alarak has sufficient reinforcements. Okay. Malash is drawing power from the Taldarim. Alarak will need the support of our warriors. Okay, this is gonna get pretty hectic, I'm pretty sure. Yes, your psionic power courses through me. Move forward, slaves. Kill all who aid Malash! You would do well to remember that I command these warriors, Alarak, not you. Okay, we're gonna want to secure our base. We're gonna push up, but this is really just gaining a tiny bit of ground.
on. Underway, let's not forget about all our energy. Start trying, let's start going to the Shadow Hunter. understand how this is possible, but my scanners are detecting high solarite concentrations in the native beasts here. We ought to pursue them. However, I think it best if we don't inform Alarak of this little diversion. Understood, Hierarch. one of these beasts out here.
They come to aid the lash. Avon's harbingers join our struggle. Fight well, warriors, and you will also ascend into hybrid. Well done, warriors. The first beast has been slain. More hybrid approaching. Be ready.
moving against us from the upper pathway. Prepare our defenses. Tangerine, slaughter the firstborn, and your ascension will be assured. Now I have all of them. My preliminary scans indicate that the solarite deposits are a byproduct of the beast's unusual digestive system. Are you saying that they're... No, wait. Never mind. I do not wish to know.
construct more pylons. And psionic cries went up as one. So, let's see. Nice, nice. Okay, we did support him with the requisite number of things. Um, but we failed to kill Taldarim Nexi. I guess I only saw two Nexi, I kind of thought that we hit three, but maybe, maybe I was just mistaken. Um, but. And that wasn't too bad. We rocked it. The uh, Our little death ball was really deathy. And, of course, Phoenix helped out a ton. All on his own. And so did the solar beams. Uh, that is what artillery is for. So, uh, thanks for watching. I hope I'll catch you next episode. Until then, uh, do as I say. Not as I do. Which is get sick. Don't get sick. It's bad.